I'm Chris Bright, and I'm a foodie. And today, I'm going to make a classic a ragu a la bolognese. Just like my grandmother used to make on a Sunday. This is an all-day project. Don't start it when you got a half an hour to make dinner. Okay, let's start. First, we're going to take some extra virgin olive oil. Get the good stuff for this. Don't use some crap. Put a little in the bottom of the pan. And get the heat going here. I'm going to do a few classic traditional things with this, and I'm going to do a few things that I like to add on my own. If you don't want to add them, you don't have to, but I'll tell you which are classic and which are not. We're going to start off with a sofrito. A sofrito is onions, carrots, and celery. Otherwise known as a mirepoix, except this is Italian, so we're sofrito today. Okay? So I've already chopped up all of the onion, carrot, and the celery. Now, by all means, use the celery leaves. This is really good. You don't have to just put them in soup. Works really well in your bolognese. It's going to be on, on the stove for a while, so you got plenty of time. You're going to throw all that in there. And we're going to let it saute for, I don't know, good five, ten minutes. Now, believe it or not, I'm going to throw in something that's not usually seen, and that's garlic. I'm going to mince some garlic. I like garlic. I'm Italian. Hey, you know what? If you don't want to use it, you don't have to. And we're going to put that in with the sofrito. Also, Where is my pepper? I have some red pepper. I'm going to throw in a little. That's because I'm a quarter Sicilian. you got to have a little of this. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. But I do. And that ought to be good enough. Now we're going to stir this until the vegetables get translucent. Could be about, I don't know, 5-10 minutes. So, we'll let that saute, you come back, and we'll start adding the meats. Add a little flat leaf parsley at this point. We got the uh, sofrito, yeah, it's about translucent. And I, like I said, I like using the scissor. I'm going to save a little for later too. That ought to be enough for now. And the first meat I want to add, pancetta. Now, my supermarket has diced pancetta. That's just perfect. I mean, you don't have to do anything. You just open the thing up and throw it on in there. Um, if you cannot find pancetta, you can use bacon. Bacon will give you a more smoky flavor. Pancetta is not smoked, but if you can find the pancetta, go for it. Throw the whole thing in there. Okay, yep. I just want to get that going. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a little trick on how to put the meat into the sauce without having huge clumps. And I'm going to use a lot of meat here. Uh, I got some ground pork. So I'm going to start with that. Put that into a bowl. And I've got ground beef. Now this is about this is about a pound and a quarter. I think we had a pound of the pork. And also I have Italian sausage, which I'll put in late. As soon as I'm done here, I got almost a full bowl here. You want to take some wine. I usually use white wine. And just pour a little over the meat. This way, first of all, don't put sugar in your sauce. Do not put sugar in your sauce. Wine will do the same thing. Tastes way better. And 
Sugar's just not right. I, I, I know a lot of you love to have the sugar to cut the acid. Well, use, use wine. Okay, so then I just want to kind of work it a little bit. Not to, you don't have to do too much. And it'll stop your meat from clumping once you get in here. Okay, so I'm going to pour all that in. And the reason why I'm using the Italian sausage in addition is I want to stretch this sauce because I just love having it on everything. Tonight we're going to make it with portobello raviolis. And that's just great stuff. Uh, the traditional one would be tagliatelle. But I uh, really started to like these portobello mu uh, mushroom Ravioli, so uh, I got a I got a good deal on them, so I bought a couple packets of them, and I'm going to be using them. There's nothing wrong with using frozen ravioli. I mean, as long as it's good ravioli, doesn't make any difference to me. Um, of course, if you can get them fresh, that's great. But if you saw the deal I got on these raviolis, you would say, you know what, I'm just going to use these. And again, I'm going to pour a little bit of wine over the sausage meat because we don't want that clumping up. Let me stir this up first. And sausage tends to be a little bit more gummy. By the way, the wine I'm using is a Pinot Grigio. Um, it's something that we drink, not something that is so, so disgusting we're not going to drink it because you shouldn't be cooking with that. But it's not an expensive one. You don't have to use a $300 bottle of wine to cook with. I mean, that's kind of silly. Your dish is going to cost you just about what a mortgage payment costs you. Who wants to do that? Okay, so we put all the meat in. I had the heat down low because I had the vegetables just simmer, so now let's bring it back up. And we're going to let the meat cook. So I have about three and a half pounds or so of meat. In here. This recipe usually calls for about two, two and a half pounds. But like I said, I want to stretch this sauce. I got a couple other things I'm going to do to make a ton of bolognese because I love bolognese. So come on back in a little while and we'll take it through the next step. So our meat is sauteed. First thing I want to add, this is traditional, is tomato paste. And I'm going to Add it to the meat and vegetables and let the flavor saute in. I want to let that I want to let that work into the meat for just a minute or so. Tomato paste is traditional because it's very rich with, without the water. Um, I'm going to do something a little untraditional in a minute. Let's just work the tomato paste in. Like I said, any of these things, any of these additions that I add, you don't have to add them. You can do, you can do this. Your, your own way, you can do it the classic way, or you can just do it any way you want. It's, it's your recipe. This is mine. Okay. So I think we're pretty good there. Okay. So the first untraditional thing, I'm going to add two cans of whole tomatoes, but I'm going to crush them with my hands. And uh, I'm going to put the juice in there first. 
And I like to crush them with my hands because, hey, that's the way it's always been done in my house. You know what I'm saying? You don't use a knife. You use your hands. And you break up the tomatoes and dump them in. Any kind of tomatoes are good. This uh, San Marzano tomatoes are the best. Um, also, the San Marzano tomatoes, last I checked, were like six, seven dollars a can. So, me, I don't like to spend six, seven dollars a can for tomatoes if I don't have to. And in this case, you don't really have to. Just get, get yourself some nice romas that are canned, peeled and with the juices, and you're you're good to go. At this point, I'm going to add a few bay leaves. Um, one, two, eh, you got five of them. They're not that big. If you got whole big ones, then you might want to add, I don't know, three. It's up to you. Just make sure you fish them out because not really a great thing to bite into. Although they do add a lot of flavor. And you want to add them at this point because you have your stock going and they need time to get their flavor into the, the sauce. Also, I want to add some chicken broth. And I want to add maybe a cup, cup and a half here. I'm going to eyeball this. It's going to, it's going to be cooking for a while. So you want to make sure you have enough liquid so you don't wind up with a pot of burnt stuff. Okay. So now that that's in there, here's another little secret tip of mine. When you buy Parmigiano Reggiano, and I know you're not buying that stuff that looks like, I don't know, uh, stuff they throw on like a bowling alley or a you know, sawdust or whatever it is, but when you're done with it, you get these rinds, okay? Throw them right in there. They're great. They will cheesy up your bolognese. They taste awesome. You can always fish them out at the end if they don't break down, but sometimes they'll break down, sometimes they won't. I'm going to use all the ones that I have kicking around right now. So that's one, there's two. Don't worry, I got a whole hunk of Parmigiano Reggiano in the fridge for when we make the ravioli. I would not go without that. That's just, that doesn't happen in this house. Well, one more. And there we go. I got four of them in there. So, what we want to do is we're going to bring this up to a boil. And it's almost there right now. I'm going to add a little bit more of the chicken stock. Okay. So we're bringing this up to a boil. Then when it comes to a boil, we're going to bring it back down to a simmer. And then comes stirring, 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 stirring. A total of three hours at least. This only gets better with time. So halfway through that three hour period, about an hour and a half, we're going to come back and I'm going to add one more ingredient. So you come back and check it out. So um, we're about an hour and a half in. I want to add possibly the last ingredient. We'll see how it goes. Milk. Yes, milk. I'm going to add about a cup of milk to this pot here. Now, believe me, you're not even going to know it's there. A little bit more. Okay, that should be good. Now what happens in the next hour, hour and a half, two hours if you got the time, magic. This becomes something all to itself. The, the meats break down, they become so light and delicate, and you, 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 gotta, you gotta really try this. If you've never had a good bolognese, try this recipe. You're gonna love it. I'll be back after about another hour and a half. See you then. Okay. So now we have achieved deliciousness. I mean, look at this pot right here. This is after three hours and everything has just become a delicious amalgamation of what we started with.
<coughs> I did take out the cheese rinds and the bay leaves, and I think I got most of them. However, there might be one. All right, just warn your guests that if you hit a bay leaf, it's just on the side. Now I'm going to start the raviolis. These are portobello raviolis. And I'm going to put them in a pot of boiling water, which will promptly cool down the water, too. Personally. Yes, I know they're frozen. Like I said, big whoop. Got a great deal. Cheaper than you can get even a pound of them. And I got like three pounds of them. So we're going to let those go for about eight, nine minutes. And then we're going to serve. So come right back. So our raviolis are done. I'm going to plate it. some sauce on top of them. Usually with, uh, if it, we had some tagliatelle, we would let the pasta cook in the sauce in a separate pot, but it's a raviolis. So I just want to just ladle a couple of ladles of the sauce on top. sauce has really, really gotten down to its delicious finish. And there you have it. Bolognese. Ragu a la Bolognese with portobello mushrooms. So there you have it. We have bolognese. Ragu a la Bolognese with some portobello raviolis, one of my favorite dishes. Let's just see what we got here. And we'll put some Parmigiano-Reggiano over the top. I like some crusty bread to go with this because you got plenty of sauce that you need to sop up. Lunja. I hope you enjoy this recipe with your friends and your family. It's always been one of my favorites. Let's give it a taste and see what it's like. That is so good. Join me next time. I'm going to have some really amazing recipes for you. And I'm sure you're going to want to cook them for your own.